My name is Bailey. I'm a small town girl living a big city life. It all started with a dream to become a world famous model. Somewhere along the way, I tied a pageant and became the first and only African American Miss Missouri USA. From the Miss USA stage, a casting director saw me and scouted me for a show called Big Brother. They convinced me to leave my job as a flight attendant and step into the world of reality TV, where I met my husband, Swaggy C. Together, we have built a multi-million dollar empire, and we're only in our 20s. I'm on top of the world, I couldn't ask for a better life, and now I'm making it my mission to use my influence to change the lives of everyone in my path for the better. Welcome to my world. So I wanted to come into um, my yoga space and I wanted Brandon, who you guys don't really see too often, but he's always behind the camera, to come and just sit down with me and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about where I am during this quarantine season. It's so weird, but I feel like everything that I do in my life is spiritually based, especially now, like in the time of like, quarantine and like where I am like mentally if it were not for like my relationship with like God I would be a hot mess um, more of a mess than I am I just feel like there's so many people out there that are like yearning for like some stability or some peace and everybody always asks me like how do you get you know that that calm that that peace and it's all about like the foundational work of like how do you wake up in the morning? Like, how am I meditating? What affirmations am I saying to myself? What am I like thinking about myself? I never thought about how much work I put into self-love and self-care until so many people brought it to my attention. And during this season of quarantine, I think I fell off a little bit. At the very beginning of quarantine, I'm talking like February, I woke up in the middle of the night and I just had like this like undeniable like desire to write something down and I felt like I was like getting a, a message and I remember just writing so fast I didn't even know what I was writing um, but it was the first page of my perfect and boring journal and it literally just said manifest des destiny expansion is inevitable your expansion is undeniable to the point where your attempts to slow things down are comical and I just was like oh shoot felt oh felt that out of nowhere and it was like oh, I'm getting checked right now. Like my spirit is checking me and it wasn't wrong. Like I feel like I'm such a control freak and I have to know like what is happening at all times. Like 2020 really just like kicked me uh, on my butt and was just like, hey, like you're out of control. There's nothing that you can do to slow down the process of like where God is taking you. So you might as well just like get yourself in alignment and enjoy the ride. So how'd you do that? Woo! Woo the work! Um, <laughs> great question. Yeah, no, like the first step for me was a lot of humility. I had to check my ego, which was really hard. And it wasn't until, honestly, just recently that I was like, all right, enough is enough. Let's get back on to what you know that you need to do. I'm just so much more myself when I go and I do my routine and I hold myself accountable and I spend daily time. So it's waking up, going for a walk or a run in the morning, listening to a sermon or affirmations or something motivational. It's journaling, it's vision boarding, it's creating, it's moving forward and not being like stagnant in the place of quarantine. Because right now quarantine wants us to be hope hopeless. And I'm just refusing to do that, you know? Woo, it's been good, but it's also like a lot of work, like branding Bailey deciding you know what I want out of life is a lot of work. My mental health routine is super important to me and I really wanted to make sure that I shared it with all of you. So my friend Caitlin is moving back home to New York this week and I am really sad because Caitlin is the friend that I never thought that I wanted but I'm so glad that I have. We met on Big Brother and um, she actually backdoored my future husband which at the time I thought was ruining my life. 
um, but it ended up turning out for the best. And I'm super surprised that out of everybody from the show, Caitlin has been the most loyal and most consistent friend that I've had. So goes to show that sometimes the way things start is not the way that they finish. I wasn't expecting like you and I to be the besties of the season. Mm -hmm. Like we were the pair no one wanted. Slash but everyone <laughs> needed. No, for, no, no, for the pair of them, no one expected and no one wanted and still does <laughs> They're still not here for the friendship, but it's okay because we're here for the friendship. Yeah. But it sucks because now that like we've progressively gotten to this place where like I love you, I can call you about anything, like you know deep dark secrets. Me. Yeah, you're leaving me and I, I don't. Know. But I think that's also what makes me even more mad about like the season we're in with like COVID and friendships and like things like Ooh. that. Because honestly, Bailey, like the fact that you're able to recognize in me that like I was putting in the effort and I was changing like, that's something you wanna show up for and I don't know that right now I can say that about a lot of other Ooh, preach, girl. people. <laughs> that's life. Like I love this part of life that we're in because it's painful mm -hmm. and you know like I've lost lots of friends during the COVID season that I was like, shook by yeah. and I wasn't expecting for things to shift in this direction but also like retrospect I see it and I'm like ooh, I kind of like where we're going of like if people are not ready or willing to grow then they gotta go mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to rhyme there but but you did and for that <laughs> you're an artist <laughs> Oh god, I have to pee already. Really? Oh. I'm so sorry. You definitely aren't even remotely done yet, too. <laughs> so, that's it. Oh. Should we, can we get a catheter? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have catheters here? <laughs> so I've learned a lot about myself um, and my friendships this quarantine. I am actually shocked to just realize that like, Sometimes it's okay to let go and sometimes people don't align during different seasons of life. And it just so happens that this season of life, a lot of people's priorities got straightened out. And there were some people in my life that just weren't good for my priorities and vice versa. So there's no love loss, but there are some friendships that ended during this time. Oh my gosh, okay, okay. This is so weird, don't make it weird. Okay. <laughs> Bye, girl. Bye, baby. Love you. Love you. I have one job and one job only, and that is to be the best dog mom that Velvet could ever imagine. You're going to get a bath because you smell oh. like total food. Hey. Hey. What's up, baby? <laughs> Would you like to get over? Ready? Ready? Oh, yeah, you need a laugh. Oh, my gosh. All right, buddy. Time for a little spa day. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 my gosh.
there's been kind of like a change and I'm not really sure that I'm adjusting in the, the most productive way because how we met, we met on a reality show where we had to be forced in the same room 24 seven and there was no room for air, you know? Like I am extremely clingy, he's kind of clingy too. So we kind of like work well together in each other's space. But over the quarantine, a lot has changed. I went on my very first show alone and Chris started a business that is now like a multi-million dollar business and it's taking up most of his time. So when I came back from my big brother season this time, I came back to a, a almost completely different life where I go from spending every waking moment to Chris to him working day and night and me being by myself for a majority of the time. It takes a toll on both of us because I'm used to, you know, you know, loving on her and being around her 24 seven and vice versa. And now because I, you know, I'm really, really deep into my work. I'm not around as much. And now that I'm in this route and everything is taken care of, it switches from, you know, we spend too much time together to like, we barely spend time together. And I'm trying my best. I swear I'm trying my best um, because nothing's more important to me than my wife and her happiness. But I gotta find a balance between her happiness and work. He's doing a great job providing for us. My life is wonderful, um, but quarantine and I'm extremely lonely. So I'm gonna call my mom for a little bit of motherly advice. Maybe she can kind of shed some light on like, you know, holding down the household while your husband is at work and you know, what that kind of like looks like for my future. Hello. Hey girl. Hey baby boo, what's going on? You know, just life. Life? Yeah, life. I'm calling for a specific reason today, mother. Okay, what is it, girly? Um, okay, so I want you to shed some light um, just on like what it, I don't know, like what's it gonna look like for my life being like the wife of a workaholic. Um, just a being workaholic. A workaholic, yeah. Like, you, you're laughing, but like growing up, like, you know, dad obviously was like a great dad. He was always there for us, but it's like, I just remember him working so much. One, do I have to have kids so I don't have to be so bored and lonely? Um, or is it just like, is there something I could do to possibly pull him away from, you know, work or put him on a schedule? Like, you know, like how, how do I get him to balance his life instead of being so no days off, grind, grind, grind. He doesn't have time for anything. Okay, first of all, um, and I'm not saying that you're not grateful, but you should be very, very grateful <laughs> for your husband that one wants to work, because there's a lot of men that don't want to work, and a husband that wants to be a good provider for you. That's number one. So once you get your head in the right mindset, then you can kind of relax a little bit. My mom, oh, I love this woman because she gives really good advice, um, even when you don't want to hear it sometimes. I should be completely grateful that I have a husband that even wants to work and support our family. I have had relationships in the past where I'm the one supporting them. So to be in such an amazing position right now um, and not have to worry about a thing, my only problem is that I'm lonely, is like perspective. And I really appreciate that. And then number two, to answer your questions, I would love to have a grandchild, but no, you do not have to have children just so that you can have something to do. So what I recommend, and I know Christopher is very much a planner, what you guys need to do is just sit down and talk about what, what it looks like and what will make Bailey happy. If it's one day a week that you guys have uninterrupted time together where he doesn't pick up the phone, where he's not looking at the computer, where he's not with his partners, he's not with anyone but you and Velvet. You know, it's a little difficult now because you can't do some of the things that you would normally do, like you can't go to the spa, but you can still do some creative things together. Yeah, that's all I wanted. Okay, babe, have a good day. Okay, love you, bye. Let me turn bye-bye. And she's given me a great idea. I am going to take matters into my own hands and I am gonna set up a date of my choosing with Christopher and I'm gonna take his phone away. I'm going to distract him for a few hours and I'm going to demand the time that I need so that he can work in peace for the rest of the week. So today is surprise Swaggy Day and I'm getting extremely excited. And now all I have to do is put everything together. The lights need to go up, the blanket needs to be set, picnic table needs to be perfection, and of course the rose petals need to be sprinkled, and Swaggy needs to be suppressed.
Actually, you need to keep those with you so you can see later. Yeah, I don't know how this hat is gonna work with this blindfold. Let's just, we'll just, mm, here, I'll put it on afterwards for all this. <laughs> okay, you ready, baby? No, I'm not. I'm don't have time to do it. Working, you know, I'm in my zone. Yeah, but like... guess what? It's okay. It's okay. You're always working. This is gonna be good for you. Put your hand down. I'm scared. <laughs> you shouldn't. This is good. I got you, just fall. Listen, I just bumped into the wall. No, that was because you chose to bump into the wall. There we go. Surprise! Oh my god! Isn't this so cute? Wow, this is beautiful. I honestly don't know what to say. Um, this is the first time, like, probably ever, that like I'm speechless on something. Wow, I guess it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and guess what? I got hot and dizzy. Ooh. No, I see that. I smell it. Yeah. So come in. Here, so I, I, I guess a day is over? Yes, sir. Yeah. You're done. I, I, I'll call you tonight, bro. Don't call me tonight. I see the effort that went into this, and it just honestly made me like so happy because Bailey doesn't really do surprises. Um, you know, I usually surprise her, you know, all the time. And she always says, this is too much, this is too much. And I laugh because, like, what is too much? You know what I mean? This is too much. Are you kidding? <laughs> what the? Hold what? On, really? Okay, oh, this is. No, y'all, I'm actually in shock. Ah! Oh, my God. I hate you guys. This, this is too much. much. And I actually felt that today, you know, like, this is, like, a lot, like, going on. And. It just reminded me, like, just how important, you know, Bailey is to my life. Yeah, this is good. I wanted us to be having a moment where I just, like, love on you and appreciate you because... This is a very serious moment. This is a very serious moment. I love it so much because, you know, I already have been telling you, like, I've been feeling, like, a little bit lonely, you know, just by myself, but also... I've done some time to reflect on it and I just feel like I'm very grateful for like how hard you work and how much you do for us and um, I want to show you that as like a appreciation and more of like I miss you not like a nagging and like you're never with me kind of thing so I just put together a cute little you know dinner for us where we can just relax and like chat. No this is cute. probably yeah, probably my favorite gift you've ever done for me. Oh, yeah I wrote you something. Here. Alright, this is too much. I'm usually the gift giver. <laughs> I, and you know when you say this is too much? I get it. I get this it now. Read it all out? Yeah, sure. Babe, I love and appreciate you so much. I will always need you and I wouldn't be the woman I am without you in my life. I love you so much, baby. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. I am so happy that the surprise for Spikey went well. I was a little nervous because I thought he was going to be so mad at me for interrupting his work but he loved it so much that he had nothing to say, which for anyone that knows him knows that is completely rare. So uh, I just am like grateful. I'm grateful that this moment went well. I'm grateful that I have him and I'm just grateful for the love. Holiday season is off to a great start.